Hi guys, welcome. This is Julia from Just One More Card and I have a new video for you featuring stamps by Purple Onion Designs. We're going towards winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm so looking forward to it. So I am in the mood to create cold cards. Like I'm right now it's very hot. So I just I just want it to be winter already. So using these cute card uh, cute stamps by Purple Onion Designs. I prepared a square card base and a um uh, have some Copic friendly paper here. I started out by cutting the um, uh, the opening into my panel, front panel, and then I'm positioning my stamp. Uh, my, I have, I'll, I'll have a background stamp, sorry for that. Um, and I'm positioning it here on my card base, picking it up with the Misty, stamping it onto the acrylic from the Stamper Magic right there, and then I'm going to slide my card. Uh, base underneath that acrylic. So I'm doing this right here, sliding it underneath, and I traced the um, the round outline shape of the window onto this card base so I know where my background needs to go, and then I'm stamping it. It's basically the same as a stamp a magic, but if you don't have the stamp a magic, here's how you can do it with the um, with the misty as well. And then I'm stamping my little fox here. And I'm sliding the leftover piece of paper that I had underneath there to make sure it's in position, holding it down with some tape, and then stamping it as well here. And I'm using my favorite things, hybrid licorice ink, because that works well with Copics, watercolors, and pencils. Now for the coloring. You know I always like to color from dark to light. And I started out by uh, not using even the very darkest color, but like a, a mid-tone red color. And I'm blending towards a more an orange tone because I wanted my fox not to be so red, but more orange. I don't know, I just like the color combination. I'll be listing all the colors in the video description below or on my blog. And then I'm using some darker reds here. And I didn't want to start with the darkest reds immediately. Um, so... I saturated the paper with the uh, with the mid with the mid red color. This is this one here, and then I came in with the darkest color. Now I'm blending this out, and you can see I'm always leaving some space for the highlight and only covering over this once at the very end, so it doesn't get too dark. There we go. Here we have it. And I just like the color combination of the dark red going towards the orange um, because it's a very, um, I don't know, it's a very bright and intense combination. I, I really like it. Since I knew that my background would be mainly green and blue, I decided to use some browns on the coat of the fox here because I didn't want to have a very bright color here that would distract from the background. I wanted to have a nice contrast, so I felt that going dark on the coat would be a nice contrast against the bright background that we'll be creating later on. And again, I'm blending from dark to light, laying down the darkest color in the shadow areas and then simply blending towards the lightest color. And I like to mix um, brown colors with uh, orange colors. Some of the uh, YR20s um, are like, I don't know, they're like an ochre color. And I felt it was really nice for this for this card. I tried to keep the colors not on the, you know, super bright and intense side, like not use spring colors, but more muted colors. And I felt that this color combination for the brown coat worked out really, really well. I just need to note this down somewhere, seriously, like I keep forgetting that kind of stuff. I used my scissors to fuzzy cut them out because uh, I didn't have enough space to tape it down for my um, scan and cut machine, So, but it was easy enough to do. Now here are the trees. I want to create the look as if the trees are snow covered. So I'm just adding some green underneath each section because the overhanging branches would protect the lower hanging branches from the snow unless you have super heavy snowfall, which we haven't had here in like forever. So really hoping that this winter will be super snowy. I know I'm weird. I just, you know, I just, I don't like the heat. Everything that's over 25 degrees Celsius is just too hot for me. It's just, it's unpleasant. You know, you get all sweaty, you need to shower every five minutes and you can't really do anything. So it just annoys me. I, I like, if the summer wouldn't go over 25 degrees here, I would be totally happy with, with the global warming and all. I think I need to move to Norway or Finland or the Arctic. 
Wait, is the Arctic the one with... No, wait, that's the one with the polar bears. So, gonna move to the end Arctic, Antarctica, where there are penguins, because I don't think penguins will eat me. Anyhow, so, I'm finishing up the trees. I'm using um, uh, uh, yellow-green colors, YGs. YGs? Yes, YGs. Um, as I said, I don't want to have a very strong green look. I want to have more of a muted look. And then I could just use um, my blues to color in the entire background, but I wanted to try something new. I think this is called the stippling technique. And I'm just adding dots around the trees here. Don't worry, it's not going to remain that way. You know, I'm, I'm going to fix it up. Just be patient. And then I'm, that was my darkest blue. And then I'm moving towards the lighter blues and I'm just filling up the space space with dots. That's all I'm doing. Filling up the space with dots um, to make it look a little bit different, you know, because if you want to color in the entire background like solidly with blue, you need to go over it quite a few times to blend it out. And to be honest, I was just too lazy to do that. So I figured, you know what, just use dots. It's going to look interesting and I don't need to worry about white peeking through here and there. I don't need to worry about perfect blending. So this might take, this probably takes about as long, but it just, I don't know. I felt it looked different and, you know, everybody can do the regular blending, but the stippling here, this is just fun. It's a little different than, you know, usual stuff. So, of course, I had to add a sentiment. So, I picked up the sentiment here. Um, this is actually, I have a piece of cling vinyl temporarily adhered to the door of the Misty. On the cling vinyl is um, the tech and peel and the tech and peel holds the uh, red rubber stamp i'll have a tutorial for that on my channel either already have it or will have it soon and then i just bend the sentiment so it would go around the uh, opening stamped it onto the acrylic slid my paper underneath the acrylic to make sure i can position it correctly and then i'm using some tape to hold it in place right there and then i can stamp it voila Yes, it's a little complicated, but it looks just awesome. My my friend Sonia from Sonia K, the Art of Stamping, uh, sent me a card once and she had the sentiment curved around an opening like that. And I was like, I need to do that. I need to do that. I so need to do that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using foam tape to adhere the panel and the fox. And then at the very end, I'm not sure if I'm showing this here in the video or not, I used my white gel pen to add some snowy dots onto the tree branches here. You can see that here in the close-up just so I would have the impression of snow. I forgot that I have the stuff that I can heat set and then it gets all fluffy. I need to get this out again. And I also added some dots to the fox just, you know, for interest and to give the impression that he's also getting some snow on his fur. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and the project. If you like this, please check out these two projects um, that use similar techniques. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye.